Hello and welcome to my channel. Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator 19. Hello and welcome to Midwest Horizon, or as some of us has come to call it, Mid-Ohio, because as far as I'm told, it is supposed to mimic the farmlands and environment in the Mid-Ohio mid area. So in the last video, <clears throat> I uh, introduced to you, uh, I didn't really introduce it, but I, I talked a bit about seasons and what you could do with crops and what you could do with the animals and all those things, what, what the differences was. And just a couple of minutes ago, or, yeah, something like that, it came to me, <clears throat> I didn't really introduce seasons in itself for you. So uh, this is going to be, in my opinion, a relatively short introduction to uh, seasons, at least I hope, but as you have probably noticed by now, whenever I say I'm going to make a video short, it usually tends not to be short. But nevertheless, I'm going to do my best. So let's start by the most obvious question of all. What is seasons? Seasons is a mod that you can add, that you can add on <coughs> to uh, FS19. It has also been made for FS17. I'm not sure about 15 because I entered this realm at 17, so I'm not. I don't know anything about 15 or earlier games. It changes your gameplay substantially. Now, one of the things I would like to say right away, in my opinion, is that when I started playing FS17. I looked at the, the table of mods in, in the mod hub and uh, I thought to myself, um, seasons. I looked a little bit at the mod and, and I thought, it sounds interesting. It, it gives some substantial depth to the game that wasn't there before. And then I went on to, uh, to blogs and uh, chat forums and all those things and I read that they, they suggested that you shouldn't install seasons before you were a <laughs> seasoned farming simulator uh, game player gamer uh, so I didn't and I played a lot of FS17 and then finally when uh, I found a link to Snittertons thank you Arthur Chapman I decided now was the time to install Seasons and then it came to me that Seasons in my opinion let, let me say that right now in my opinion you shouldn't be afraid to install Seasons even if you're a new gamer, if you're new to this game. From my perspective, Seasons doesn't make your gameplay harder. It changes it. There are more stuff that you have to consider, there are more things you have to think about. But in my opinion, it doesn't make the game harder. So uh, let me tell you why. I think that some people tend to say that this makes the game harder. I think they say that it makes the game harder because there are more things you need to consider, there are more things that you need to be aware of. But as I see it, those things are not, they are not counterintuitive. If anything, they are pretty intuitive, at least from my perspective. And also, um, you have a lot of tools to help you get from where you start to where you want to finish. So uh, that is why I wouldn't, I would say, don't be afraid to install seasons even if you are a new player at this game and and you aren't aware of how you're going to use um, um, plows or cultivators and when you're going to seed and all those things. What I would say, however is that the things you need to consider if you're installing Seasons and want to use Seasons as a mod on a pre-existing save game. Now this game, uh, save game we're in now, is uh, my private um, game, so this is not something I make videos of, this is <laughs> what I can play whenever I'm not able to make a video for YouTube or I just want to play for myself without talking to anyone um, or anything. Um, so, uh, so what, what I've done here is that before I installed Seasons or activated the mod, 
I um, pl sorry, not plowed. I harvested this field up here. Let's just take a look. It is here, field 62. I made some changes to the field. I cut it off here, as you can see. So uh, I only have, this is field 62, and this is something I don't use. That's not important by now. What is important is that if you want to install Seasons uh, on a, and, and use it on an X6, X, X, if you want to install Seasons on an existing save game, and you don't want to lose your crops, then you should highly consider, I would recommend, that you harvest all those crops beforehand. So do whichever you feel is necessary to get the things you want, the crops you want to harvest and so on and so on, from your fields before you start seasons. When you start up seasons, you are asked whether you want to reset the fields or you want to keep them. I recommend that you reset the fields because then you start at the same point as everyone else and then you don't mess up the gameplay in itself. That's going to be more obvious for you. I think when we begin to talk a little bit about, more about what Seasons does. So what Seasons try to mimic, let's just get a look at I really love this. I'm just going to say this. I really love this map because this is sort of a one of the maps that you can use Big Bot. One of the, the things that, that have puzzled me a great deal is that when Big Bot was added to Elbate, it was, not a, it was not a DLC, but nevertheless, when Big Bot was added to uh, FS19, uh, they didn't add a map to us that we could use um, Big Bot on. So I found that a bit strange, but nevertheless, uh, I'm playing, like I said, on Midwest Horizon, Midwest Horizon, and uh, that is an excellent map for Big Bud. Um, yeah. All right. So back to seasons. So seasons, like it says in its base, wants to mimic the four different seasons that we have over a year. That is like it is now spring. Then comes summer, then comes autumn, and then comes winter. And then they're going to cycle that all the way around. So if you ha if you are a FS17, FS14, or FS at this game here, FS19 player, I am absolutely certain that you have encountered at some point that little bit of not boring but just uninteresting um, cycle of preparing a field, spraying a field, planting a field, spraying a field, harvesting, preparing, spraying, planting, harvesting, preparing, when I say prepare, I mean plow or, or cultivate, and so on and so on and so on and so on in one endless cycle. And, and one of the other things that you might have thought about is that when you, at least when I drive around here in Denmark, it is pretty obvious to me that farmers just don't plan whatever they want, whenever they want. But in, in vanilla FS17 and FS19, maybe I should say it reversed, in vanilla FS19 and also FS17, you can do that. You can plant anything you want. If you need canola, then you can plant canola. If you need soybeans, you can plant soybeans. If you need corn, you can plant corn. Well, fellas, not in seasons. So seasons, like I said, try to mimic the four different seasons that we have on a, over a year, and then want you to plan what you plan what you planned over that year. So one of the most basic things that you want to to ha that you have as uh, in your arsenal when you start up seasons is that you can call out the seasons menu that is done by pressing Alt. Yes. So here it is. Here is the seasons map, and this is the first thing that you see. Um, let me quickly run over what the different things are, and then I will go probably go into more depth in in um, in in upcoming videos. But this is the calendar for planting. So it's not just a calendar; it's a calendar for planting. And you can see here you have all the crops here: wheat, barley, oat, cotton, canola, sunflower, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beets, oilseed, radish, poplar, 
Grass Sugar King. Then you have another number. <laughs> then you have a row of numbers here. You can see uh, in my case, I I have tried to make. I'll just show you. This is also. I'm also digressing here, but please. Let me just show you. You can see I've changed the. Um, I've changed the currency to dollars and I've changed the uh, speed indicator to miles per hour because I am playing in the United States. It's not, I am not, but this map is supposed to take place in the United States. Then I think it would be prudent or not prudent, but suitable to use um, well, American um, numbers, figures. But there is one American figure that I will never, ever, ever take into use. And then it is that, I'm sorry, ridiculous empirical measurement of temperatures, Fahrenheit. I think converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit, it is, it's a ridiculous system. I'm sorry to say it, but as far as I remember, it's something like dividing by four and then plusing three point something. It is, it is, it is hilarious. I, I can't deal with it. So, back to the seasons menu. You'll see a row of numbers here. Obviously, that is temperatures. And uh, because I really hate Fahrenheit, <laughs> I've I've chosen to use a Celsius um, because that is the numbers that I am used to, and they scale um, linearly with uh, Kelvin, which is my preferred scale as a physicist. But nevertheless, that's not important here. I digress once again. All right, as you can see, we have three numbers here that are white. So let's go out and you can look up here in the top corner. I can't show you. Um, maybe let me just. Um, all right, so because I have cosplay installed, I have now jumped into my case Optum. And uh, since I have cosplay installed, I can get my mouse um, free. And then I can show you this little row of things up here that you can probably see has changed a bit. So out here you have the weather. This is the usual weather you will see. Then you have a little icon here. That means that the crops, if you have any, or the grass is wet. That is indica indicative of, the, of that it has just recently rained in the game. Then you have temperatures out here. You can see you have <coughs> You have a temperature up here that is the air temperature and down here you have the ground temperature which is here then here you have the indicator that says that it's spring it's going to change the four different icons over here you can see it's the second of early spring and then the rest of the icons are the same all right so let's jump back to big bar and jump out try not to be skewered by <laughs> the uh, subsoiler and get out to the road once again. Or the side, at least. And then just stand here so we don't get plowed over by Big Bud. All right. So as you can see now that I've shown you that the ground temperature right now is seven degrees. So what you have here is the temperatures that you need in order for a high probability that your crops will um, germinate in the soil so think of it this way when you plant something in seasons then that seed or that crop or whatever it is need to germinate in order to to become anything in order for you to to get a harvest so when the temperature is below this number here then there's a low probability that the germination will succeed. Or at least, and that, I think that is new in, uh, in FS19 seasons, or seasons 19. As far as I remember it, in 17 you could plant whenever you wanted. Um, I'll just get a little further away from uh, Big Bot. Yes, you could plant whenever you wanted. The crops would just not germinate um, before that temperature went above or at the same as that temperature out here so that haven't changed from seasons 
um, 17. Here you can see the icons for spring, summer, autumn, winter. Down here you have a row of green bars and yellow bars. And you can see here planting season and harvest season. So one of the things I noticed when I played a vanilla FS19 was that I thought it was sort of a random game whenever I had to harvest a, a field and I found it completely annoying than setting the the um, the harvest sorry the uh, the the crop cycle or the crop growth to fast that uh, you could have fields uh, maturing in the middle of the night and then while you were sleeping and then when you woke up your uh, harvest was unfortunately withered so you couldn't harvest it withering can still happen in seasons but what you have here is some time that your crops need some, some stages that your crop needs to go through um in order to grow but this transition will only happen um on the on on the on, on the step from one i think it's one um of these uh seasonal steps here so you can see day one to three it's early spring day four to six it is uh mid spring and seven to nine it is late spring so i have a am i going to show you how to set that but i have a nine day cycle here so one whole season will take nine days and your your crops as i remember it will only change from this step here to this step or this step to the and so on so on so and it will happen on the well on the time 23 59 something like that it will happen at the end of the day on the last day of that particular part of season whatever you want to call it these first three days here or two days depending on how you set it up so in the green area here is the time when you for example can plant wheat so if you for example plant it in early summer your crops will not probably i'll say probably but it is most likely that they will not successfully germinate and then you'll your 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 harvest will fail but then again you, you can see you can also plant them here uh, in uh, late uh, summer and all through um, autumn that is something for barley, uh, wheat, barley, and oat, for example. You cannot do it with cotton, and also you need higher temperatures. So you can see cotton, for example, you can only plant that uh, late spring and early summer, early and mid summer. And for example, uh, canola, you can plant that as well as um, canola and sunflower. You can plant that as well as uh, like a wheat, barley, and oat. But soybeans, for example, you can only plant that from mid-spring all the way up to mid-summer. So this is the calendar where you can see when you should plant things and when you should not. I have the Midwest US Geomod installed. I will probably also make a video telling you a little bit about that. What it basically does is that it changes all the environments that I have. When the sun goes up, when it goes down, when it's snowing, when temperature changes, when I have to plant things, when not to, when harvest, and all those things, it changes that as close to according to being in Midwest US. Now I know that Ohio is not exactly Midwest US, but I haven't yet been able to find an almanac where I can see exactly when you plant things in mid Ohio. So uh, that's why I went with Midwest US. So this is the calendar. This is where you can see when to plant and when to harvest. So for example, on this field here, I think I'm going to plant um, soybeans, I think. So as you can see, we need to have higher ground temperature. So I can't plant soy soybeans yet. I want to do that on, I want to plant canola on another field. <clears throat> 
also I can only plant soybeans in mid spring so I need to wait a couple of days before doing that if I plant it now I will probably lose that that crop so that uh, there's no reason to doing that and then when they go through all these cycles no matter when you start and no matter how many cycles there are you will only be able to harvest and harvest your crops when they are in this yellow area here when time is in that yellow area here so for example again for my soybeans whether i plant them in mid spring late spring early summer mid summer i will not be able to harvest them at the earliest point before um, early autumn I can obviously because there are stages they have to go through so if I plant them here I will probably only be able to first harvest them here in early winter and that gives the and that's not something else that I want to talk about but that gives the risk that I might have uh, frost, uh, frost, that I might have frost, and then I will probably also lose my crops. So this is how this works. This is the planting calendar. If you're familiar with the uh, seasons for FS17 or earlier versions, you will notice that there is a weather forecast for the earlier versions, at least for FS17, season 17, you would have a forecast like the normal, um, forecast in, FA, in in vanilla farming simulator so there's no difference there but in seasons 19 the weather forecast has been greatly expanded so you have a lot of more information now first of all you can see what the weather is going to be today so as you can see um, between 9 and 12 there's going the weather forecast is cloudy from 15 up to 18 and 21 that is probably 12 o'clock so all the way from 15 o'clock to 12 o'clock at night that is 15 uh, p.m to 12 a.m it's probably going to rain then there might be some little intercession between um, 12 a.m and 3 a.m but then it's going to rain all the way through into Tuesday, 12 o'clock, even Wednesday, and so on, so on. So this is the weather that you will probably see. This means that it's going to be sunny and nice. Let me just see if I have to move from... Nah, let's move a little bit. While we enjoy Big Butt. All right. Also here you have three different temperatures. Now notice you will only get, as far as I know, the weather that is the air temperature. So this is the max, for example, if we take, uh, let's say, um, 15 o'clock, 15 uh, p.m., the maximum temperature is going to be 10 degrees. The average temperature is going to be 10 degrees. And the minimum temperature is going to be 10 degrees so it is most likely going to be 10 degrees but for example if we take over here you can see that the maximum temperature is going to be 7 degrees the average is going to be 6 and the minimum is going to be 5 so what you can say is that the temperature throughout this these hours here from from uh, 12 o'clock to uh, 3 o'clock or whatever where we were, we were they're going to be somewhere between 5 degrees and 7 degrees. Then we can see here the precipitation in millimeters. So we're going to get 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 12. And you can see it's, it's going to take on, right? This is almost going to be really hard rain, right? A lot of rain. So as you can see here also, we have... So... 0.2 and 0.4 millimeters is going to be sort of a light breeze it's really nothing but then you can see the precipitation in percentage and that is the risk or certainty so as you can see here at sunday which is uh as you probably know also from normal weather forecast that 
the further out we go, the more uncertain the weather forecast will be. But let's take this for an example on Sunday. If we have uh, we have 25 millimeters of, of precipitation, so that's pretty much, that's, that's hard rain. But we only have 80% um, risk or certainty that it will rain. Over here, for example, on Saturday, we're getting 14 millimeters, but we only have 60% certainty that it will rain. As opposed to over here uh, at today, they say 100%. So they are fairly certain that we will get some rain, but not so much. Then there are wind speeds, and as you can see, it's relatively high wind speeds. What they help you with is when you're going to um, dry grass, there are sort of two things that you need to consider. I'm going to go into that in more depth, but I'm just going to say quickly that it's wind speed. The more wind is blowing, the more you can dry your grass. And obviously also the weather in itself. So if it's sunny, you have, and then windy, then you will have more dry grass potential, a drying potential. As you can see down here, we have two pluses that is high um, uh, potential. Then we have a plus that is not very much potential. Then we have zero and zero that is nothing. It, it doesn't give you anything. And then we have minus that is negative. It means that you will not be able, it will decrease your drying, it will ruin it. Then we have, and this is also something that is completely new in seasons 19. We have the frost resistance and we have the drought resistance. So let me just show you. We have this little tool here. Um, let me just show you. You can go into your tools and then go into miscellaneous. And then we have the MT9 here. In the early versions, it was called the Whoopster or Whoopster, but now it's called the MT9. That little tool will give you some information. So if you press it, it will tell you the coordinates on the map, the elevation in feet. If you are playing European, you'll get it in meters. Beforehand, this was canola that was planted. We have zero percentage uh, growth rate for our crops, obviously, because I'm about to plow it over. <laughs> we have 24% um, crop wetness, and that is not really relevant here because, again, we're going to run it over. But if you, for example, are considering mowing your grass, then you should either consider waiting a little bit so this number gets below 20%, or you should tether it and I'm going to uh, tether it and I'm going to make another video explain more about that. Then we have the fertilization level here and the wetness, the, the ground wetness level here. So in this case here, you can get bonuses for planting um, certain crops and you can also get, uh, and that is ex given to you in percentages of um, fertilization. So I am at 67%, so I only need one level of, um, one run over of um, fer fertilizer, and then I have 100%. Also, you can see we have 32% ground wetness, and that number is what is relevant from what we saw here. So as you can see, wheat, barley, oat, cotton, and canola. Let's take that. Frost resistance when their seeds are high. So if I were to plant them, even though it was very cold, as you can see, you can plant them during winter, or actually not winter, but you can plant them in late autumn. And then they will survive the frost period, if you have it, in winter. And then you can again harvest them in early summer. So you can plant wheat, barley, oat, canola, sunflower. No, sorry. Wheat, barley, oat, and canola. You can plant that two times over one year. You can plant them in uh, spring. 
and you can plant them in late summer and all through um, autumn. It's getting a bit, bit closer, I think. He's pretty fast. Or oh, she is. I haven't seen whether it's uh, him or her. All right. And that is why these crops here obviously needs to be um, frost resistant because otherwise it would be um, ridiculous to planting them throughout winter. But you can see here, for example, for soybeans, they are low, low and none as um, they are low as seeds, they are low as young and there is no frost resistance um, when they are mature. So if you plant, let's say, if you plant soybeans here in midsummer, you might risk, like I said, if you go into early winter before you harvest them, you might risk losing them because they have no frost resistance whatsoever. Um, drought resistance, that is going to play into that. So that basically means that you need to consider how much water you have on your fields. Like I said, if you use the Wobster tool here or the MT9, you can see how much water your ground has. And if that goes very low, you might lose your crops. Now, I haven't found out yet. I haven't played that much on seasons to know whether you can use, let me just show you a little tool that I downloaded. I'm not sure where it is actually. Definitely not here. Maybe it is. Um, you see, I think it's an. Uh, where is it? Uh, there we are. So listen, let me see if it's in here somewhere. Now you can see all of the <laughs> different mods that I have downloaded throughout the time. Let's see this. this. No. All right. So let's see where it might be. Um, Shouldn't be in build systems, no. Header trailers, no, obviously not. Um, there are some uh, windrows, tethers, crop protection, perhaps. Yes, there it was. So this is sort of a, this is a tool that you can use to, um, you can, um, spray your fields with you can give them water what i'm not sure is whether this machine here will actually it looks like it's sun powered uh, will actually increase your um no i didn't want to buy it your moisture rate on your fields but if your moisture rate goes very low you might end up having your crops dying so if, for example if you look at drought you can see for example that something like potatoes or sugar beets they have absolutely no drought resistance uh, when they're seeds and when they're young but they have very little drought resistance when uh, they're mature so that is what that means you have to consider these things here uh, when you plant your um Seeds, you can read down here, the potential for frost damage increase as air temperature falls below zero degrees. Potential for drought damage increases when the soil water content is below 12 degrees. Use the measurement tool to monitor the soil, soil water content. Now, I haven't, like I said, I haven't figured out yet whether you can, and that is something I'm going to test, and then obviously we're going to find that out together. But I haven't, like I wanted to say, I haven't figured out yet whether um using a tool like i just showed you will increase uh the wetness of the ground and then 
prevent you from having drought. Obviously, on real farms, you can spray your fields with water if it's allowed, and that will that will definitely give you the opportunity to keep your crops from dying of drought. Let's move on. So one of the other things that you need to consider in uh, in seasons is when you sell your crops. Um, for example, you can see here the curve, in and that goes directly. You can see in early summer, all the way in the early and mid summer and late summer. This is usually where we harvest wheat, barley, and oat, and also um, canola. So you can see here for wheat in the midsummer area where the most wheat is, the prices will drop a little bit. <clears throat> but as we go into winter, where all the fields, all the where, where there's no harvest, no crops harvested, the price will rise gradually because then supply and demand that there's more demand for wheat we can check what was it i said also canola yes let's check canola you can see it's relatively the same picture it will only drop a little bit in winter as well so it's sort of in um late late autumn that the prices are highest here if we look at oh if we look at something like um, potatoes, for example, it's sort of the same picture. If you have animals, and obviously you probably will do that, you can, let me see if I can found, find a cow. So you can see, when you plan on buying cows, for example, you also need to consider when you want to do that. In this case here, it seems that the best time to buy cows, at least the Limousin cow here, uh, will be somewhere in early summer. And that has something to do when the cows um, produce animals, when they give birth and all those things. So this is also one of the things that they wanted to implement that that and that has also been in the later versions of uh, of uh, seasons in season 17 is this more extensive supply and demand overview of when you uh, can sell your animals whatever you want to do i think that i um, think that dorset is a sheep so there's different kinds of sheep that is also one of the things that you need to consider I'm going to make a video about the animals but there are more animals here and one of the strange things you might consider in in vanilla um fs19 is that they have implemented or added these different animals the brahman and, and different cows but they all basically did the same they gave milk what they have done here in uh, fs uh, sorry in seasons is that they have sort of change those different animals. So if you want to have milk cows, then you can buy those, then you'll get milk. If you want meat animals, eat meat cows, then you, for example, can buy this the, the Brahman cows, and then you will get meat cows. They will not give you any milk, but then you can sell the cows themselves. Obviously for pigs, it's they will only give you meat right you can sell them they'll not give you anything else but that is one of the things in in seasons that you can also see hay and straw yeah so this is the economy it simply means that you can go in and see if you want to sell canola when should i sell it well you should sell it in something like late spring or something like that then there is the crop rotation plan and now i must admit i haven't really gotten into the depth of what this really does. But as you can see, you can make in rotation. So rotation one, you can put in wheat. And I, I think we should read it like this, but I'm definitely not sure how you should do it. 
you should probably read it like this. No, I'm pretty sure that it is supposed to be read like this. So one rotation I can run is read canola soybeans, read canola soybeans. That gives some extension of my crops. So this is this number here should in some way represents a bonus that you get that will give you this additional fertilization level. And also right here I have the rotation two. So we have um, canola, soybeans, canola, soybeans, canola, soybeans. So I could also, to make it easier, do it like this. So you set it to none and none. Because I only have these two here, but then you could put in, for example, something like corn and then fallow. So one of the things that you can do here is that I'm just going to change those to none. None and none. So what the crop rotations do is that when you plant something on your fields, obviously you will get, you will use some nutrients in the ground. Now the different plants use different nutrients and that is why you want to do crop rotations. So that is why also the crop rotation cycle, when you do that, will give you an added bonus because then you don't run your fields dry. So in, you can't just plant wheat all day long on this, these fields without going to add nutrients to the ground. So the more you sort of use the ground in the same manner, the more you have to add nutrients, that is fertilization to the ground. And that is also why when you run a crop rotation cycle, then you will actually get a bonus, some fertilization, because then some nutrients are left in the ground that the other plants, the other crops that you plant, they can use. The final thing I'm going to tell you about this time is the different uh, settings that you can have in seasons. So first and foremost, you can change between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Obviously, there's no need to use Kelvin because Kelvin is just 273.5 degrees difference from Celsius. Then you can have the season's introductions that shows an introduction in the start. Then you can change the length so you can go all the way down to three days. That means that you have one, two, three. So these different, I'm just going to change to nine again because it obviously changes something. But what it means is that one season will be three days. In this case here, I have that one days, one season so will be nine days. So as you can see, that means that one day will be early spring at, at the three days. One day will be mid, mid spring and one day will be late spring. If you have six day seasons, then two days will be early spring, two days will be mid spring and two days will be late spring and so on and so forth. If you have like I have now nine days, then one day will be three, three days will be early, three days will be mid, three days will be late, and then all the way up to 24 days for one season, which means that the first eight days will be early spring, the next eight days will be mid spring, and the next eight days will be late spring, and then obviously all the rest of the seasons. So that's it. That's basically how the the menus that that's, that's I would say sort of the main topics of seasons. Obviously, there's more when you go into the nitty gritty details of what you have to do in certain conditions and certain cases, and that is what I probably will want to do in later upcoming videos. But I just wanted to introduce to you um, seasons in itself. So how do I want to surmise this video here? Well, like I said again, I don't think that you in any way should be afraid of using Seasons as a new beginner. I don't think that Seasons will make your game that much harder. It will change it. There are some things that you need to consider, like I said, and I, I can 
And I can certainly imagine that when you watch this video and hear me say it's not going to make your game harder and you look at all those menus and all of those different informations that I went through, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, right, it is definitely going to make it harder. But my honest opinion is that seasons will make your game more interesting. It's not going to make it harder because it's the same things you're going to do. You just have to plan it a little bit more. But obviously you have, I, I'll say, a great tool here to help you plan whatever you want to do. And you have you have the forecast that you can go in to look, look on to. So for example, if you have planned on drying grass, for instance, you can go in and look on the plan and then you can say, well, if you have uh, three or four pluses in two pluses like this in a row, even if you were to harvest grass today, right now, then you could probably harvest it as hay the next day. Maybe. That depends right on how the how it is right now. But as you can see right now, it changed. The weather changed, right? Um probably because I went in here and changed the uh um the days here, the cycles, but but weather will change all the time. So you can see no rain right now, right? No precipitation. There, there is some numbers, but this zero, oh, just over here, there's 40% um, probability that there will fall some precipitation. So, the main, depending on the temperatures and so on and so forth, you might be able to dry grass these two first days and then get it as hay. And obviously, you need to go in here to check whether you are doing the right thing when you are planting and so on and so forth. So you need to consider, am I in, in trouble regarding drought? For example, if I have planted soybeans, um, well, maybe if the temperature, uh, sorry, if the, if uh, the, the soil water content goes very much below 12%, then I might. But like I said, I would like to figure out whether you can use a tool like the one I showed you to increase that number again. Because obviously in real life you can do that. And that is basically what uh, Seasons is trying to do. So to uh, round it off in a round this off in a reasonable manner, I would say that the indicator for whether you should install Seasons or not is not whether it will be too hard for you. The indicator whether for whether you should install Seasons or not is whether you want this added <coughs> realism on your on your maps. That's the indicator. So if if you are if you are completely happy with doing that, um, like I said, um, preparing that is. Cultivating, planting, um, spraying, harvesting, cultivating, planting, spraying, harvesting. If you're completely happy with doing that cycle and all you really want to do is try out the different uh, equipments and, and, and get as much done as possible, get as big farms as possible, get as many fields as possible, get as many animals as possible and mix as much money as completely possible, then seasons might not be for you. But if you want that added realism, and in my opinion, I think seasons makes it a bit easier in order to how you should manage your fields. Not I'm not thinking about the crop rotation cycle, but I'm thinking about when you can harvest your fields because no matter when you plant your crops, you know that those crops will not be able to be harvested before you enter this yellow line here. And that means that your crops will also not just wither on you during the night when you sleep before you enter this area here. Then they can wither after some times, but I th think that the withering, I have to test that out because obviously this is a very long um, harvesting period but i think it's something like that your crops will only wither if you get into frost so you you have some time to to obviously to to harvest them if you have any questions for me then uh, put them down in the uh, 
comment section below. I will try to answer them either with a new video or um, just writing to you. And as always, if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, then give it a thumbs down. But please don't tell me what is wrong and what I can do better. And if you want to um, be notified whenever I make something new. And also if you want to follow me and, and you think I make good um, content, then you can subscribe to my channel. Obviously, I think you need to subscribe in order to be notified. But nevertheless, that is entirely up to you. I hope that you have found this video to be interesting and a little bit learning, uh, educational. I certainly have fun making them, so there's nothing more to say than uh, bye bye and uh, see you in the next video.